Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, typically when you have a flat earth debunking channel, you take a flat earth claim and you just present the correct information and let the readers see for themselves which is more believable. Today I'm going to do that a little bit differently. I'm going to kind of delve a little bit deeper into the flat earth mindset. My question has always been, why is it when they make claims such as airplanes have to dip their nose or we've never been to Antarctica or whatever, we correct them with debunking videos, they wait two weeks and then say the exact same thing again. Today is a classic example of a flat earth myth that is being perpetuated on the flat earth channels. So this occurred in March of 2020. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Enclosed, you know, when Bird literally said that, you know, on his fifth trip to Antarctica, okay, his fifth trip with a whole armada that, uh, damn, you know, after, you know, and this is after he got back that from, uh, uh, from to the South Pole, past the South Pole from Middle America, there's a, a land bigger than the United States, not the same size, not smaller, bigger than the United States. And uh, that would be somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Then him, then one more thing, it, Bird's uh, claiming that he's uh, about to go alone to hunker down for the nine month winter. And I got a lot of sunset, sunrise things. that will probably be my next video. A lot of information on, uh, on, on sunrise times and all that. But um, yeah, he clearly said he's hunkering down for the nine months of darkness. OK, and, uh, you know, people don't want to hear that either. I don't know that puts you in the middle of the Indian Ocean. If uh, if there's a uh, past the South Pole from middle America, there's an area bigger than the United States that puts you in the Indian freaking ocean. And there's no snow there. And all. I mean, it's just, come on, man. The truth is out there for the ears that want to hear it. Now, one thing that I want to make very clear, I'm not going to address this nine months of darkness nonsense. I have no idea where that came from. He didn't provide an actual quote for it. And it's basically a red herring. What I am very specifically going to address is this claim that our out of breath and excited flat earth friend is making. And that is that Admiral Byrd appeared on a television show in the mid fifties and said that there was land beyond the South Pole from Little America that was unexplored and as large as the United States. Notice that Brian was very specific that he said the South Pole, not Antarctica, the South Pole. Now our friend does not believe that this is possible because everything past the South Pole apparently is the Indian Ocean. So before we go further, let's go ahead and gauge the size of Antarctica to the continental United States. And here they are. So in white is Antarctica, in gray is the continental United States. As you can see, the Antarctica is actually much larger than the lower 48 here in the US. So let's go ahead and reorient this picture so that it follows exactly what Admiral Byrd said. Beyond the South Pole from Little America is an area of land as large as the United States. And he was talking about remaining unexplored areas of the world on this show. So let's go ahead and orient it that way. Now here is a little more accurate map of Antarctica. As you can clearly see, here is the South Pole. This is the continent of Antarctica. And right here where that star is, is Little America. So the area beyond the pole from Little America refers to this area right here and all of this. Let's go see how that compares to the United States. Now here I'm going to leave the earlier map up, the one that we looked at just a moment ago, and I'm going to put up this second map. Now as you can see, the location of Little America is approximately correct, as is the location of the South Pole. Now we have superimposed the same map of the United States, the continental United States, over the area of the Antarctic continent beyond the South Pole from Little America. And as you can very clearly see, that statement is essentially correct. So unusual that he would get on television 
and actually say that they found this extra land and no one would talk about it after that. I mean, why wasn't that Agreed. a big deal? Why don't people talk about that? What happened? Did you ever look at the, a map they of Antarctica? They closed it off with a treaty to keep people from asking questions. Yeah, no, I've looked at but a map of Antarctica. But do you see his demeanor? Bob, it reminded me of the moon landing again. Look at his demeanor, the way he's talking on that when I, I, this, you know, the bird guy was. It was literally like he was saying stuff. He wasn't happy about it. If you had you know, seen all these things, wouldn't you kind of be really happy to say, hey, there's more land or this or that? You wouldn't have this look at your face like uh, it's the end of the world. Around. Hold on, guys. Bob's go trying ahead, to Bob. ask. Go ahead, but, Bob. Go ahead. Brandon, did you ever look at a map of Antarctica? Yes, of course. Great. Uh, where's a little America? Uh, well, I couldn't point it out. I'd have to look at the map. Why? Okay. Well, if you look at Little America and you go from Little America to the South Pole, the second half of Antarctica is on the other side of the South Pole, and it's actually larger than the continental United States. Just thought I'd clear that up for you. So you think he was That's talking not, about Antarctica when he said Antarctica. past Antarctica? There's more land. Past the South Pole. Past the South Pole. So that was newsworthy yeah. to say, oh, the Antarctica doesn't end at the South Pole. There's another side to Antarctica. The South Pole's actually in the Beyond middle of it. Did you think the they South didn't know that No, his Bob? point, his right. point uh, was that there was normal, a tremendous right? amount of land down there that could be exploited for resources. It was, because he was talking about piles and he said of there minerals and piles of all kinds of stuff. And Bob, exactly. that, that sounds like an ad hoc, ad hoc explanation. Can you give us a uh, kind of a reference for why you think that? Yeah, it's called the map of Antarctica, and I did a video on it a year ago. So you just made this it up, very issue. Essentially, this is what you're saying. You're interpreting no, birds no, words this is, on what he meant. This is a standard. A, no, this is just a possibility I'm, that you're bringing up. Is that what it is? No, I'm put. I'm putting his words in context exactly based on what he said, what, and what I did context? a video on it a year ago. What context? Because he didn't. He, if did you he look say at the map said? of Antarctica, if you look at the map of Antarctica, what he said was that if you go past Little America, beyond the South Pole, is larger than the U.S. And there were minerals, uranium, and all sorts of uh, resources that could be exploited. That's exactly what he said. Why would he, why would he frame it like that, though? Beyond the South Pole. Because it's accurate. Because it's accurate. Well, you could say that about coming from any side. So if I'm on the other side of the your globe, and I go down to Antarctica... And I go, okay. that's on your side Brandon, of the South Pole. Brandon, he was very specific. Yeah, but they said from Little America. From Little America. That is exactly what he said. And had he bothered listening to the actual interview and the interview what makes and you looking think I at a map, to the you'd see. Why are you, why are you trying to because say that you I have obviously, Because you obviously aren't making the connection and you didn't look at the map. I didn't look at the map of Antarctica. I'm looking at it right now, and I have listened okay, to the interview. Great. So why are you? How much? Like how I much land is on the other side? How much land is on the other side of the South Pole from Little America? And compare that to the size of the continental U.S. Is it about the same? I don't know. Or larger? I haven't done that comparison. Okay, well, go ahead and do that and come back. I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, do you hope to see that? I do. Now, you see how they tried to put me on the defensive there, how they tried to make this just my opinion, and then they tried to change the subject? Well, while we were doing this, Brandon was actually doing a Google search for some things. I think it's very illustrative for us to have a look at that little search that he was doing in the background. Here, let's have a look. Yep. Some say they found tech there. But the German, you know, the Germans were there before, right? The Nazis? So they, some say they found tech. 
Yeah, there's Some lots of stories like that. I don't know what to believe about any of that. Stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop it because this is the point right here. You see how they're just trying to go over all sorts of things? They're trying to talk about hot springs and swimming in Antarctica. Anything but the point that we were talking about. But Brandon is doing a search. So let's look at that real quick. There are several hits that came up on this search for Avril Bird Land Beyond Antarctica. Now, perhaps he skipped that top one because it was from a debunking website, and he's trying to go down to these lower ones, like on the Quora here, because he's looking for something that will support his narrative. He doesn't want to hit that top one. He deliberately skips over it. So let's go ahead and have a look and see what it shows. Oh my goodness, let's get a good look at this. Admiral Byrd, an area as big as the United States on the other side of the South Pole. Here's the map that I just used. Here's the interview with Admiral Byrd on TV. And here is an entire discussion of the South Pole. Sorry, Otis is mad at me right now. Uh, he came back not using one of his legs the other day, and he actually went to the vet today because I was afraid it was broken. We haven't let him out of the house for the last day, and as you can tell, he's really mad at me and wants to go out. He can't quite walk very well, so he can't get away from the coyotes or even deal with other cats, much less dogs. But he's mad. But he'll get over it. Well, the purpose of making this video was not to just simply correct a flat earther that made a stupid assertion that was easily disproven. This was to show that even after flat earthers are corrected, they'll simply double down or at the very least not admit their mistake. They'll have an excuse. And I asked him if he wanted to try and explain himself. First of all, He's had 24 hours to evaluate the maps and the statements and the videos. And I was wondering if he had actually come up with a different conclusion. And the second thing is I wanted to ask him why he didn't pick that first citation when he did the Google search and review it because the information was right there. He sent back a classic flat earth response. Let me show it to you. He claimed he didn't make any claims at all. He claimed that it was my fault for not listening to him well enough to hear that he wasn't making any claims. This is the classic flat earth defense. I didn't claim anything, so I don't have anything to explain. I was kind of agreeing that it was strange. I wasn't agreeing with the idea or the, the content of the assertion made by one member on his panel. This is a cop-out. It's an intellectual cop-out and dishonest. This is why you never allow flat earthers to just talk about the globe. Who cares about the globe? We don't have anything to prove on the globe. You're claiming that the earth is flat. You're claiming that this observation or this historical event or whatever is what you think it is. So let's go ahead and talk about that. What's your evidence for that? Let's go ahead and try and test that theory. They won't want to do that because they have their butts handed to them every time. So let's look at a couple of other Antarctica claims that flat earthers like to make, and many of you have heard before. The first one is that Captain Cook's voyage around Antarctica was more than 70,000 miles. And given the size of the continent that they tell us, that would be impossible. It would be much less than that. So let's have a look at Captain Cook's voyages. And here they are. Captain Cook was on voyages of discovery. They were not direct routes to Antarctica. He did not simply go straight to Antarctica, sail around it, and call it a day. He meandered all over the Southern Hemisphere. And remember, he came all the way down from England and returned all the way to England, and that was included in the 70,000 miles. He certainly didn't just sail straight around Antarctica and call it a day. You know who does sail straight around Antarctica and calls it a day? Here is a yacht race that goes directly around Antarctica, and you can see it in Sail World. It's the Antarctic Cup yacht race. 
This is a direct race around Antarctica. It's not a meandering voyage. These guys are going to go around the horn and come home. So if you want to look into actual distances, go ahead and have a look at that. Let's also have a look at our friend Admiral Byrd. Now, if you want to learn more about Admiral Byrd and Antarctica, you can look at the military expeditions to Antarctica following World War II, and they were Operation High Jump and Operation Deep Freeze. There's entries for them both in Wikipedia. You can read up on them if you want. Now, these military expeditions by the United States were one of the main reasons that we developed the Antarctic Treaty we didn't want to have World War III over the bottom of the world. That was the primary driving force behind the Antarctic Treaty. We demilitarized it. It is nuclear-free. It's not to be mined, and it's for scientific research for the world. It's an example of world cooperation. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Don't take any wooden nickels from the flat earth, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.